There's no bad time to start. It don't have to sound pretty. Just tell them what's on your heart. Cause it's not a religion. It's more like a friendship. Just talk to your father. Like you are his kid. Just start talking to Jesus. Just start talking to Jesus. You can talk to Jesus Oh, whenever you like Just start talking to Jesus Just start talking to Jesus Just keep talking to Jesus For the rest of your Well, good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, it's good to see you guys uh, uh, here this morning, and uh, so good to be back. Uh, I guess you call it live. I've been here the last two Sundays. I don't know where everybody else has been, but uh, but no, it's good to be back together today. I sure miss being together as God's people. So I, I appreciate you. We know that. Um, we've got some others that uh, I've got word from that they've been exposed of other places, but we're thankful that uh, the outbreak that happened through our, our men's gathering is gone. Can you say thank you, Jesus, for that? Yeah, and uh, so uh, we're grateful to the Lord for that, and uh, Good. To, I, I know Bill is here this morning. Bill's uh, got a smiling face, and uh, do, do, yeah, there he is. It was hid for a moment, and uh, so we're grateful for that. I haven't heard. Uh, well, I have heard Roger talk to him yesterday, and uh, he's doing okay. But uh, I know uh, uh, Carl and Becky were still struggling. For, uh, still, uh, and we we're going to pray for them and lift them up before the Lord. Good to see you guys. I know you guys had it also what three weeks ago, and so. Uh, man, I, I tell you, I'm ready for that stuff to be gone from here. How about you in Jesus' name? And so, but anyway, I'm glad. To, you know, I was thinking as I you know, got ready, was walking out here this morning, that this is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. And I was thinking, you know, that you know, sorrow and sadness and the mully grubs or whatever you might want to call them. Uh, those things are catching, you know that, if you're having uh, a down and out day and you get around somebody and their week's not going quite as well and they get to see you got the mully grubs and then they got the mully grubs. Before you know it, everybody's got the mully grubs, right? I don't want mully grubs, amen? I want to choose to rejoice and be glad in the Lord. And so I was thinking there's something in that scripture that says this is the day the Lord is made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. There is something in that about a choice. There is something about that that is more than just saying, okay, I'm going to respond when I feel glory bumps, or I'm going to respond when uh, you know, I, I feel a, a wave of anointing. No, we respond to who He is this morning. No matter what anything else is, we're going to rejoice and be glad this morning in Him. But we're going to rejoice and be glad in Him. Amen? Because, you know, gladness is catching, right? Joy is catching, right? I, and I want, I want you to get joy from me. I don't want any molly grubs, right? We can squeeze lemons, but let's don't squeeze lemons. Let's lift up Jesus, amen? So, so again, we're glad. We're so grateful for Ken and Skylight. It's uh, been a decade since Ken has been here. And... Uh, he, uh, both of us got a little less hair than we did a decade ago, but uh, Jesus is, 
this is uh, your COVID era. I hear you, brother. But uh, but we're glad you guys are here this morning, and uh, we're thankful that, again, you're here. We have a team away ministering at uh, the Dallas, North Carolina Four Square Church, and we pray for them this morning, and uh, pray for Brother Paul ministering at Restoration, and, uh, and just all that God is doing. I still remember a prophecy that was given probably almost 40 years ago in the old building, and it began to say then that there would be rivers and streams that would flow out of this house, that we would have no idea and uh, where those rivers and streams were flowing to. And, you know, when I see people, you know, used to as pastor, you want everybody to be here, right? You want everybody to be here, nobody be gone. It was that religious mindset, but... I'm glad today that we can release people to go minister to other places, right? And it doesn't mean anything that God's any less right here in our midst. Amen? So praise the Lord for that. And thank you for being here. And uh, those that will join us online, we're so thankful that you're here this morning. I'm going to make a few announcements now, and I'm going to pray. And uh, and then we're going to worship. Are you ready to worship? Man, they were practicing a while ago, and it just felt so good to be in live worship, I tell you. I love the worship of the Lord. Julie, where are you at? Julie, come on around. Julie's got a couple of announcements that uh, she's going to make, and then I'll close it out. Hey, yes, sir. Okay, well, good morning. So this was supposed to be made, this announcement, uh, a couple weeks ago. So I apologize for the short time um, for getting these together. Um, But I want to mention the Operation Christmas Child um, to pack a shoebox. So Monty is going to come around with these little pamphlets. Um, It gives you some ideas of what to put in the shoebox. And then on the back, there's a label that you mark um, for whether it's a boy or a girl and then the age group. Um, so you could just tape it on the shoebox. If you don't want to do that until you bring the shoebox here, that's fine, and we can tape it on there just in case if you don't want to or if you have trouble doing that or cutting it out, um, we can do that. So just try to I challenge you for one shoebox, a family at least, so that way we have enough um, because one of the staff members are, probably myself, are going to have to make a trip um, to I think it's either Boone or Charlotte to drop the boxes off um, for the week of the collection. And so we just want to have enough boxes to make that worth it and then also just bless the kids. So also, um, I gave these to Scott and Renee in the children's building, and they're like a little sheet that the kids are going to fill out, and it just kind of talks about them. Um, It draws a picture of them, where they're from, all just kind of fun information that the kids that receive the shoebox can read over and kind of get to know the kids here and and where the shoeboxes come from. So if you have a kid that are that will fill these out, just use theirs. Um, but if not, I'll have them do some extra, so that way if you want to include it in your shoebox and you don't have kids to fill this out, and you can put that in there anyways. Um, so there's that. They have to be returned on November the 7th. Um, I think that's that Sunday morning. So if you'll just have them on the 7th and just let me know, um, we'll have a little area to put them in. Another thing is passage appreciation. It's next Sunday, the 24th. I have a couple of people bring in some stuff. We're going to have like a little breakfast starting about 9 o'clock that morning um, to just fellowship with the pastors. I'm going to have baskets for everybody. You could do gift cards, little gifts if you know their favorite candy, whatever. Um, So that way we could show our appreciation for them. And then we'll have like a little service. And then Trunk or Treat is October the 31st, that Sunday. I believe it's from 5 to 7, if I'm not mistaken. Um, There is a sign-up sheet if you want to put your car and do the trunk or treat. Um, Scott had mentioned that if there's enough people that want to do the trunk or treat and put their car in there, they might even do, like, hot dogs to give away for the kids that come and do the trunk or treat. Um, So just make sure you sign up for that, and that's it, I think. Paul's going to be mad at me if I don't mention Chosen. It is November 19th and 20th. that evening starting at 6 o'clock on Friday and Saturday. So just make sure you mark your calendars for that as well. Thank you, Julie. 
And the thing about uh, the 31st, we don't wait until then if you are willing to, and this is an outreach, we, again, I haven't preached uh, on this in quite a number of years, but we don't celebrate Halloween, amen, and uh, it's not a a thing that uh, we're going to celebrate that day, but we just see it as a way of outreach and showing uh, the love of God to our community, and um, just, uh, so, but we need to know if you're willing to um, be in that with, with your car, and uh, so uh, please let us know. There, I think there, Julie, is there a sign-up sheet back there? Yeah. Okay. So if you would, uh, those that are here, if you're listening online, please let us know also. All right. Well, stand, Bill. Yeah. Absolutely. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. You know, I, I believe that. You know, I believe the, uh, and again, I've, we've endeavored and you'll have to try to walk in wisdom, but, you know, but the work of the Great Commission has never stopped. Jesus didn't tell us to go into all the world and preach the gospel except during the time of COVID. You know, he didn't tell us to uh, ever stop that. So I, I'm grateful, and that, that's what Bill and I talked about. We're going to believe that, yeah, we had to shut down for a couple weeks, and Again, folks have been sick, but yet there were seeds planted, and we're believing God's going to bring those to fruition in, fruition in Jesus' name. Amen. Two weeks from today, we're going to have a short business session. We have uh, new council members will be presenting before you. So, again, that's my duty to uh, let you know. Also, district conference is a uh, uh, week on Thursday at Cornelius. If anyone is interested in that, let me know, and we'll talk more about it. Stand with me this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we just this morning come and we worship you. Father, we come this morning and we declare the goodness of who you are. Father, we declare the faithfulness of who you are. Father, I'm so glad that even times of when we're unfaithful, you remain faithful. Lord God, you are God and there is none beside you. And Lord, I know there's many even here, others listening online, others that couldn't be here this morning or chose not to be here for whatever reason. That God, they've had bad weeks. They've walked through things that just in the sense of looking at the temporary, Lord, could be discouraging. But God, we're going to choose to look beyond that this morning. And Father, instead of looking at the things which can be seen, we're going to look at the things which can't be seen. And Father, those things are eternal, Lord, so we're going to look to you this morning. Lord, for you're the glory and the lifter of our head this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Your name is still on high, the name of Jesus. Lord, above every name today, Lord, whether it be COVID, whether it be uh, struggles, addictions, uh, uh, heart issues, whatever, marriage issues, financial issues, the name of Jesus, Lord, is still higher. So, Lord, we lift that name up this morning. And, Lord, we invite you. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you have been so faithful. Lord, over these months to meet with us and let your glory fall in this house. So, Father, we're looking again, Lord, to encounter you this morning. We're not looking to say, okay, we just had church today. Lord, we're looking for an encounter with you. Lord, we're looking, Lord, for an infusion from heaven, God. We're looking, Lord, for you to touch us today. And, Lord, thank you. You're faithful to do that. So, Lord, now as we worship you, thank you, Lord, that you inhabit our praise in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's worship. Good morning. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning. I missed you. Missed you. I am so thankful to be among you this morning. I missed you. I missed worshiping with you. Corporate worship. There's something about it. I truly have waited to be back among you this morning. It's going to be short and sweet this morning because we're missing some band members and stuff. But let's just worship together in a few little songs this morning and let's make it worth it this morning. Will you worship with me this morning?
love to worship with the Lord. I about already lost my voice, but that's okay. I hadn't slept much the last two or three nights. When my mom, when my body gets tired, my voice is the first thing to go. But well, that's okay. I'm going to praise him till it's gone. Amen. And then I'll praise him with a whisper. So again, bless you. Just remain standing. We're going to bring our tithe and offerings to the Lord. I said this online last week, and I just want to say it again this morning. I appreciate the faithfulness of your giving. And uh, last week, I uh, um, had a gentleman, and uh, one of our senior ladies called me and said, my husband had a dream last night. And said, in that dream, he saw... He said he had to give you $500 for the church or had to give you some money for the church and said, can we meet you? He said he don't want to wait. He wants to do it now. I said, sure, I can meet you. Just got through cutting grass, but I can meet you. And uh, so he said they pulled up in front of the church, and he said, here it is. He said it's five $100 bills, and he said it's in an envelope, and he said that's what I saw in my dream. He, he said I saw me putting five $100 bills in, in an offering envelope and giving it to you and then you would get it in the church. I said, okay, God, I got that responsibility. Don't let me forget, amen. And so I'm, I took it that day and made sure Julie had it, amen. But I, 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 I say that to say, isn't it wonderful to see the faithfulness of the people of God? Amen. You know, that it's not just about getting together, doing things, and even our seniors that live on fixed income that says, I had a dream. God said, do this. And I believe the blessings of God are released. You have been faithful, and I honor your faithfulness, and God honors your faithfulness this morning. So let's call ourselves blessed as we enter back into worship and we bring our tithe and offerings to the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's, there's nothing worth more that can come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord 
be seated. You gonna go fix my song for me? I know worship was kind of short this morning. I'm missing a lot of people. I'm missing my other singers. <clears throat> my voice is about to go, but I'm gonna sing this song because the Lord told me to. Um, I haven't done a special in a long time. Um, there was a time I didn't. I didn't know if I would sing again. This week was Caleb's birthday. It's been a rough week. I sung at a wedding for a girl that he went to high school with. And um, instead of wedding flowers, I get to do grave flowers. That God is still great. And um, he reminds me of that every day. And all the hours of the night that I stay up and get up. He's proven his love for me. And um, even last night as I was awake, as Ricky said, the hours of the night, the sleeplessness, <clears throat> it gets to my voice, and then not having other singers with me today because of different things, um, sometimes I feel like I fail you as a worship leader, but um, I apologize if I do, but um, I want to sing this song to this morning <clears throat> because the Lord told me to. But just to proclaim how great he is. How great he is. How I know he is still a good God. Even with all that I've been through these last six months, I can still say how great thou art. Go ahead, Brandon. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I
Jesus. I'm glad he's my God this morning. How about you? <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I think we'll just give God a big old shout of praise in his house this morning. Come on, lift his name up. Hallelujah. He is worthy today. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Woo, excuse me, but man, that's good. That's good stuff. Amen. I'm glad I'm his, old songwriter said, and he's mine. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Well, thank you again. I, I will do one thing before my brother comes around. Tomorrow is a very special day. Tomorrow is my daughter's birthday. And so, uh, of course, I can't sing, but uh, and I'm going to tell you how old she'll be. But I'll never forget uh, that day that many years ago, sneaking up the stairs at Rutherford Hospital and holding her in my arms the first time. And uh, she reached up and touched me on the cheek. And I'll never forget the day she was born, and she's had my heart ever since. I love you, and uh, you mean the world to me. Can you sing happy birthday to her? Somebody started off. Go ahead. I can't sing. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Amen. I love you. And Todd had a birthday this week also, so you can tell Todd happy birthday. I won't tell him how. 3 3 0, yeah. I know you may have saw some pictures of the cane on Facebook, but anyway, but uh, I love you guys. My honor this morning to have my brother Ken Pounders again. Uh, Ken, uh, well, I don't know how many years ago uh, God uh, had her pass across. You've been a blessing. You brought such good word here through also the great relationship we had through Brother Dale and the time, all the good things that God has did, Tad's place, and uh, I'm just grateful. Now you're headquartered in Alabama, I think, where your father-in-law's ministry, and uh, so still doing some work in Charlotte and still just preaching the gospel around the world. So we love you. We honor you. We're so glad to have you and Skylar with us this morning. So as they come, would you tell them welcome today? Thanks, brother. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, it's so good to be back with, back here with you guys. And uh, uh, looking around, I think there's a lot of folks here that, weren't here the last time I was here. So, um, in fact, let me just ask you, let, let me ask you, how many are sitting there thinking, I have no clue who this guy is? Let, let, me, let me see your hands. Okay. Yeah, so quite a few of you. Um, well, praise the Lord. Um, we do have a long history here with your church, but my wife and I actually left the county um, back in um, 2010. And uh, we returned to Alabama, where we're from. And uh, initially, we returned because my mom passed away and my dad had Alzheimer's. And so we really had to make a decision whether to move him up here to Rutherford County or to go to where he was. And we felt like, for his sake, that it would be best to keep him in his, his, the, the environment that he was used to. Uh, plus, we knew that eventually... Uh, we would take over the helm of Outreach Ministries of Alabama. So um, actually most of you, and in fact your, your church body has supported our missions ministry for many, many years now. Um, Priority Evangelism is, uh, has been and is involved with projects all around the world. And uh, so we're still very, very plugged in with world missions. But also we took the helm of a ministry called Outreach Ministries of Alabama um, actually, it's the ministry that I came to the Lord through. Yes. Um, my father-in-law, who very much was not my father-in-law at that time, uh, he wouldn't have let me near his daughter with a 10-foot pole back then. Um, but I, I, I'm going to share more about my story in a moment. But I was headed to five years in the Alabama State Penitentiary. Um, this was back in the early 80s. And um, um, as an alternative... To going to the penitentiary, the judge said, I'm going to send you to a ministry called Outreach Ministries of Alabama. 
And my father-in-law took me out of jail and led me to Jesus and then discipled me, um, taught me how to live out my faith in Christ. And <clears throat> then, of course, later, he let me meet his daughter, which was super duper. And uh, so many of you, some of you in this room know my, my wife, Sonia. And uh, then we ended up here in Rutherford County um, for about 12 years and actually raised our family here. We have five children. Now I have three grandchildren as well. And, uh, but then we returned to Alabama, and we head up both of those ministries there. And so um, you guys have continued to stand with us, and for that I'm extremely grateful um, because we're still very much plugged in with uh, you know, not only ministries around the world, um, but now also reaching out to the drug culture, um, which is really a missions field all its own. Um, probably everybody in this room, your life has even, probably everybody in this room, your life has been directly touched by addiction. Um, in fact, let me just ask you, how many of you would say, yeah, um, my life has been impacted by addiction? So that's, that's most of you. And probably if we just uh, move that out just a hair, you know somebody that's struggling with addiction. It's everybody in the room. Um, let, before I get really started into what I want, to sh- uh, want us, us to share this morning, let me introduce Skylar Linderman. Um, Skylar is a, a dear friend of mine, um, a colleague in ministry, really kind of my right hand. And in fact, in some ways, I sometimes feel like I'm his right hand because God's really blessing his life and his ministry. Um, but uh, when I first met Skylar six years ago, uh, five years ago, something mm-hmm. like that. Six, um, almost six. <clears throat> he was uh, a mainline drug user, shooting narcotics in his veins every day, um, sick, literally, like in the hospital sick, and uh, hopeless. Everybody that knew him said, you'll never change. And uh, God reached into his life, and he came mm-hmm. to live with us. Uh, we had the opportunity to, uh, uh, to disciple him. For a year of his life, actually more than that, I think you interned, Mm -hmm. interned with us there as well. Oh, and uh, yeah, everybody's voice. Um, I'm struggling just a little bit, but I'm going to tell you something, sister. If that's struggling, oh my goodness, I thought I was going to go to heaven. Um, Thank you so much. What a sweet, sweet time of worship. And uh, my goodness, if that's struggling, I I think we'd all been raptured if you weren't struggling. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, but yeah, Skyler um, uh, was w- with us for a year, and then we, he interned for about another six or eight months with us, and then we sent him up here, actually, to Dr. Michael Brown's ministry, um, where he went through Bible school, and uh, then he's been back with us on staff, and he basically, his ministry is really a, uh, a replicate of, of my ministry. He's involved both internationally ministering in nations around the world, but also works with us there at Outreach Ministries, reaching out to young men coming out of addiction. So why don't you take a moment and, and just greet them, Scott? Well, good morning. I greet you all in Jesus' mighty name. It's so good to be back in North Carolina. I, I love my time in North Carolina. I lived here for two years or over towards Charlotte and Concord. Um, but yeah, I love North Carolina. Um, I'm loving this weather this morning for yeah, sure. Praise, praise God. the Lord. I'm tired of the the hot weather, but but yeah, God has been extremely, extremely good in my life. Uh, My wife and my son stayed back at where we're staying um, because we're going to be traveling back home tonight, so he just turned one years old. Uh, His name is Abraham, and uh, yeah, the Lord's really blessed my life uh, the past several years since he broke in um, in a mighty way, and I'll share more about that here in just a little bit, but... But yeah, it's an honor and a privilege to be with all of you this morning. Praise God. Amen. So Abraham's your only child? Well, I have one on the way, so so everybody Praise on God. Facebook knows now, or wherever this is streaming to. He's He's got a little girl on the way, or that's that's what they're believing God for. Yeah. We both think it's a girl, right? Right, but I'm usually, I've been wrong 100% of the yeah. time, so... <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. Um, we, we're going to just take, uh, it, it's really kind of cool how this came down because anytime we're going to speak together, we, I try to feel out what he's feeling on his heart, what I'm feeling, and both of us were like literally right on the same page. And so I, I was 100% sure that this is what God wants us to share. 
Um, again, before I share the scripture, let me just mention that out there in the foyer, there's a table, like right in the middle of everything, right by the hand sanitizer station. You realize that's the only good thing to come out of COVID is that we get free hand sanitizer all the time now. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, well, it's not great, but whatever. Um, so yeah, there's a table right by your hand sanitizer out there, and there's a brochure about Outreach Ministries of Alabama. If you know somebody that needs to overcome their addiction, um, it, you can put that brochure in their hand or just take one so that you've got it, so that you know, you know what's available to you. And if you think, but hey, way, that's way over in Alabama, um, let me tell you the best thing that ever happens to a drug addict is you get him out of his environment and move him about seven or eight hours away where he can't walk out the door easily and then let him get his life together. And so you send him over there, and we'll send him back as a man of God. Does that sound like a deal? Um, so, yeah. And if you got young ladies that are struggling, we don't yet have our women's home open, but we do work directly with a lot of other ministries that do. And so, yes, even point young ladies our direction as well. Well, <clears throat> the psalmist David, and well, there's some debate. Some people think he didn't write this psalm, but I personally think he did. Um, uh, in Psalm 40, you're probably familiar with this portion of scripture. Um, it goes like this. The psalmist says, I waited patiently for the yes. Lord yes. <clears throat> and he inclined unto yes. me. He inclined unto Thank me. I like God. that. Thank That's God. like this. Yes. It's like, if, you know, do you realize that in every one of our lives, God is waiting on us. Yes, he is. He's, he's already done everything that needs to be done. Right. He, he already paid the price for you yes. so that you could be reconciled to the Father, so that you could be made right with Him, so that you could come back into fellowship with God. He's already done everything that needs to be done, and now He's on go. He's waiting. Right. And so I remember the night that I surrendered my life to Jesus I'm going to tell you what, I, was, I still had drugs running through my veins. My life was a shambles. And I just cried out to God. I said, I'm sick of the way I'm living. If you'll set me free, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. And you know what I believe? I believe that Jesus was already inclined to me. He was already waiting. It's like he was going, yes, here's, here's the moment I've been wanting. Because, you know, have you ever heard that verse in Jeremiah where God says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before I brought you forth, I had consecrated you. And I've sent you for Jeremiah. I sent you as a prophet to the nations. Well, you may or may not be a prophet to the nations, but I know this, you are definitely a witness to the nations. And so God says, I already knew you. I already set you apart. I already have my hand on your life. And so he's waiting on you and I so that he can scoop us up and say, let's do life together. So he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me. He heard my cry. Listen to this. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and he established my steps. He's put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise unto our God. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. That's my testimony. That's this man's testimony. It's probably your testimony too. Because every one of us, the devil works overtime. Not only to keep us in sin, but to destroy us in sin. That's his job. Yeah. You know that, right? The devil hates your guts. And you may be thinking, oh, why, why does the devil hate my guts? Well, I want to tell you why he hates your guts. Because you're created in the image and the likeness of God. Yes. And there's, there is life, the potential for life, the potential for transformation, the potential for world-changing ability is in your life. Yes. It's in my life. Yes. And so he doesn't want you to come into that place of fullness. And, you know, here's the thing. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy is what John 10.10 10 says. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. I've heard a lot of people say, 
during this last year and a half, two years, whatever, how long we've been doing this, I don't know. Um, I've heard a lot of people say to me, well, Brother Ken, I guess we can't do evangelism anymore. And I'm like, what? What do you mean we can't do? Well, and then I figured out what they meant. They meant we can't do big events. They, well, we kind of can now, but we couldn't before. And we can't, oh, we're limited on how we can meet and we got to distance ourselves. But you know what I told them? I said, you know what? Life, the life of Jesus is still inside of you. And your life is interacting with other people's lives all the time. The question is, how bold for Jesus are we going to be? And I want to challenge you that the answer to the world's problems is very simple. It's Christ. There's a Savior. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. So let me tell you this. I found myself many years ago in a pit. It was kind of a pit of my own doing. You know, the devil helped me, I'm sure, but my life was out of control. I started using drugs when I was very, very young, 12 years old, actually. And then all through my teenage years, I got worse and worse, started selling drugs, eventually started mainlining narcotics in my veins. And um, in my early 20s, my life was completely a shambles. And um, pretty much everybody that knew me said the same thing. You'll never change. You'll never amount to anything. You'll be a drug addict until the day you die. That's what I kept hearing over and over and over. And probably in the natural, it was true. It's true. But here's what the Word of God says. If any man be in Christ, he or she's a new creature. Old things pass away. All things become new. And so God in his mercy began to reach into my life. In fact, I can remember... I can remember going one morning to the mirror, and when I looked in the mirror, there was a skeleton looking back at me. I know that's probably hard, <laughs> hard to believe today, but no, at that time, from drug abuse and a life out of control, there was a skeleton looking back at me. And I remember realizing, you, you know what, if something doesn't happen in your life, you're not going to live very long. Um, I remember a short time after that, I was at a party with a bunch of friends and everybody was laughing, and you know, of course we were you know, getting high. There was marijuana being passed around. and um, I can remember as I looked around at my friends, this is like literally probably two weeks before I got saved. It's like I could see that they all had masks on, and this was before COVID. Um, it's like they had Halloween masks on, like, but smiley faces, like everybody's happy, everybody's partying. And I remember this, I mean, this was like, I was actually there. It wasn't a dream. This was like a vision or something. Um, While I was looking at my friends, their masks started falling down and I could see the misery. I could see the pain. And I remember thinking to myself, these people are miserable. And the Lord spoke to me and said, and you're the most miserable one of all of them. And I knew something's got to happen in my life. Well, again, I already told you that, well, God sent several avenues, different people pointing me in the right direction. But then there was a judge that said, I'm going to give you a chance. You can go to prison or you can go to outreach ministries. Well, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I can figure that one out. (laughs) And so I went off to outreach ministries and God intervened in my life. And... um, You know, I've had the privilege now for, in January, it'll be 40 years. I've had the privilege of working with other men and women coming out of addiction. And in fact, that's what we do full time now, um, is we we take guys off the streets, we lead them to Christ, and then we teach them how to live out their faith in Jesus. And then if, when they're ready and when they're willing, we train them for ministry. And, um, um, yeah, it's been an amazing, an amazing journey, amazing ride. Um, as I said, there's actually brochures out there. There's also a little card out there called Conquer Addiction. It's just a, an address to our website, I mean, to our uh, podcast. And l- let me tell you this, then I want to turn it over to this man. 
Um, of course, the last year, the year and a half, has been very limited on what we can do overseas, although those, those parameters are coming off. Um, and so I've watched God open some doors that I would have never, I would have never thought. Like, for example, um, I did a Zoom event a few months ago f- with uh, uh, the gypsies in Bulgaria. I work among the gypsies there. And it was time for me to go there. And if I'd have went there in person, we would have probably reached about 1,000 people, which would have been great. Praise the Lord. I'd be glad to do that. But they're on a pretty heavy lockdown, and so I couldn't go. And... Um, So as an alternative, we did a Zoom event, and we reached 6,000 people. So yeah, like, you know, and I've had the opportunity to Zoom with many parts of the world. Um, So yeah, I would much prefer face-to-face, but hey, God can do whatever he wants to do. But let me tell you something else that happened. We had the opportunity to launch, my wife and I, Sonia, and actually Skylar's on there quite a bit with, I think you've been on about half half the episodes um, late, uh, last year, it officially launched in August, so just a few months now. We launched with Charisma Podcast Network, we, we launched Conquer Addiction. And basically, we deal with all kinds of topics surrounding addiction, but really, we just preach the gospel yeah. is what we do, because he's the hope of the world. Yeah. And so we preach the gospel, and <clears throat> that thing has grown exponentially over the last several months. And in fact, they just told me, they, they, somebody from Charisma contacted me and said, as of a couple of weeks ago, our podcast has, has been downloaded in 46 nations. 46 nations. Here's the deal. I've been doing missions my entire adult life, and I've ministered in 20 nations. And in just a few weeks, we've now been downloaded in 46 nations around the world. So... Amen. Take one of those cards, check out our podcast, but also if you would pray about that podcast because it has the potential to literally reach hundreds of thousands of people, in fact, potentially millions of people around the world. So, brother, share with us. Take this Amen. same passage and all right if share I with stand us. up. You can. Hallelujah. I'm going to use your thing right here. So, hallelujah. This is one of my favorite passages here in Psalm 40, and I'm in the agreement that it is probably David that did write this passage. And it's probably when he was, you know, running from Saul, um, hiding out in caves and and in great danger many, many times. And and he cried out to the Lord. And, of course, the Lord heard his cry, reached down, pulled him out of a pit, set his feet upon a rock and put a new song in his mouth. It says, many will hear and praise our God. They will, they will see and they will fear the Lord and they will put their trust in him. Yeah. When, when I read this passage, it shows me that God saves us and brings us out of something for a purpose and for a reason. And uh, I'm so thankful that God did that in, in my life. Um, I actually grew up in North Alabama, grew up in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, which is just north of where the ministry is located. And I was in church every single Sunday growing up. And I thank God that I had parents, and I have parents, uh, great parents, that had me in church every Sunday morning. Um, and I, I got to hear the Bible. I knew all about the Bible. But I didn't, know, I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus all of these years. I came to the front when I was a young boy. I said a prayer, and I meant it. Um, but, and I also felt like I was called to preach the gospel at a young age. But the, the cares of this world, the, you know, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be popular. And so about 14, 15 years old, I began to really give in to sin, really began to compromise, began to look at pornography, uh, began to drink alcohol, began to smoke marijuana, uh, began to take uh, different pills. And before too long, I was completely bound to sin, bound to depression, bound to anxiety. Um, I didn't know who I was. Um, but I'm still going to church every Sunday. My whole life, I've gone to church almost every Sunday. Uh, there's something terribly wrong with that picture uh, because, you know, church, to a large degree in America, it's become an event we attend on Sunday morning. It's become a social gathering 
which I love a good event and I love a good social gathering. I think it's vital and very important, but we're called to go and live out our faith uh, the rest of the week as well. Um, So I went down a dark, dark road. I'm not going to go into all of the details, but this went on for many years. I would, you know, get good for a little while. I'd kind of get off drugs for a little while, still, still struggling with depression, still struggling with anxiety. Um, actually, and then I even began to work in a church as a youth pastor um, in my early 20s. Um, I met a girl. I was also working at Target. I met a girl. Um, I invited her to church. She gave her life to Jesus. And, um, you know, I was still living a compromised life very much. Uh, we ended up getting married, and I was 24 years old. And just four months after marriage, she was, I was already at church. She was on her way to church. She lost control of the vehicle, slammed into a tree, and it, and it killed her. Um, my life began to very much spiral out of control. I went down a very, very dark road. Um, so yeah, before too long, I, I stepped down as a youth pastor. I was shooting drugs every day just to be able to function. Um, the psalmist here talks about being stuck in the miry clay. Um, in Alabama, we have this clay. And when it rains and you step in this mud, you might have it here, I'm not sure. And you, if you're wearing boots, if you're not careful when you step up, the boot gets stuck in there. Well, I was stuck. I was stuck in sin. It's like the, the harder I tried in my own ability, the more I would get stuck and the more I would sink down. And this is what sin does in our life. It takes you way farther than you ever wanted to go. Um, it, it's, it, you're a bond. You're in bondage. You're in slavery to sin. And I got stuck in this place. Over those next three years, I was in and out of the hospital seven times. Um, I would get infections in my arm from shooting dope. I I tried to commit suicide one night. Um, I got a blood clot. It was just a horrible three years. I was stuck in a pit, a dark pit, a hopeless pit. And, and I was told by doctors over and over, you'll always be a drug addict. I went to these meetings where you stand up and you say, I'm a drug addict. Um, I, I was bound and I didn't see any hope uh, whatsoever. I tried uh, meetings. I tried psychiatrists. I tried a, uh, a secular drug rehab uh, where I went 60 days where they, you know, they fix you a nice steak every night. You get to go outside <laughs> and smoke cigarettes all day long. Um, and guess what? I didn't change whatsoever. I probably got much, much worse. Um, so that went on for three years, and then I went into the hospital on Thanksgiving Day of 2015. The doctor told me about a place called Outreach Ministries of Alabama, where one of his best friends had gone through and who had, it came out successfully. Uh, Jesus set him completely free, um, and he's a successful businessman in, in North Alabama now. And so, you know, I decided ultimately that I was going to go. I was a little reluctant. Um, because I still, in my own mind, felt like I could, I could fix myself, that I could get better. Um, but I ended up going into the program. I go in at the end of December of 2015. I'm coming off of these drugs, and I'm very sick. Um, this goes on for a few days, and then finally I go to one of the counselors and say, you know what, I don't think this is for me. I need to go get some other kind of help. And it was really the devil was tormenting me, and he was telling me, you got to get out of this place. But praise the Lord, this counselor, he said, he taught me out of leaving. They ended up taking me to the hospital because I was really dehydrated. Um, I couldn't keep anything down. And so I'm going through these withdrawals, and he's speaking the Word of God into my life. I've read the Word of God my whole life, but something was different that morning. I I came to this place of the end of myself, um, and and you hear this cry here in Psalm 40, it's, it's like a sense of, of desperation was arising. He, he was backed into a corner, and he was crying on the one. He, he, he had looked in other, I mean, he had a lot of talents. David had a lot of talents. I mean, he, he could fight his way out of many things. But here he came to a place, I can't fight myself out of here. Lord, you're going to have to deliver me yeah. out of this pit. And that's where I was this morning. That counts, as I laid there in that hospital bed, he declared, Jeremiah 29, 13, says, seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Something inside of me began to stir and began to speak to me. And I know now it was the Holy Spirit saying, why don't you try that? So I said, all right, I'm going to try it. It wasn't a pretty prayer that I prayed, but I meant it with all of my heart. I said, Jesus, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll marry whoever you want me to marry. I'm going to quit fighting you your way, Lord, whatever you want to do. 
And instantaneously, my withdrawal stopped. The yeah. power of God came upon me. Praise God. He broke off addiction, depression, and, and, and anxiety off of me. I've never had one drug craving from that moment. I haven't struggled with anxiety. I have not struggled with depression. It had me bound for 12 years. Yeah. And like I said, the doctors told me, psychiatrists told me, you're always going to be a drug addict. You're always going to have to take this medication. But Jesus said this. He said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah. And he's alive this morning. Yeah. There's nobody that's too far gone for Jesus. And he, reach, he delights in reaching into a pit and pulling people out. We see this throughout the Gospels, especially uh, right after the disciples and Jesus. They're in a boat. They go across the water. There's a big storm. If I was the disciples, I'd probably stop getting in the boat with Jesus. Uh, but anyway, they get to the other side of the lake. You know, Jesus had calmed the storm miraculously. They get to the other side. I'm sure the disciples got out of the boat and began to kiss the ground. Thank God that they made it to the other side. But then they look up, and there's a man. Actually, in Matthew's account, it says that there's two men running at Jesus, wide open, naked, with cuts all over them, and full of demons. Yeah. If I was those disciples, I probably would have got back in the boat and started paddling the other way. I mean, think, this guy is worse than anybody you've ever met in your entire yeah, life. Right. Think of the very worst person you know right now, times that by about 100, and that's this guy. But Jesus thinks much differently than me and the, and the world. He looks at this, and instead of running and saying, man, this guy's hopeless, he says, no, no, no. This is a perfect opportunity to set the captive free. Jesus yeah. was drawn to this man, and, and this man got set free, and he sent him out. See, he was saved from something for something. He got delivered, he got set free, and he was sent out to proclaim what Jesus had done in his life back in his hometown. This is what God does in our lives when yeah. we're stuck in a pit. And, and, and I was desperate that morning. And I believe God responds to desperations when we're hungry, when we're thirsty, when we've looked everywhere, we've looked for love in all of the wrong places. And then we say, you know what, Jesus, we know, I know that you are my only hope. It makes me think of Bartimaeus. He was, he was sitting there and he was a blind man and he heard about this man who's been healing the sick. He's been raising the dead. He's been cleansing the lepers. He's been casting out devils. He hears the Messiah is walking by yeah. him. Yeah. And he says, you know what? I'm going to get to that man. I'm going to shout to that man. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And you know what his friends did? They said, man, be quiet. You're going to make us look foolish. People are going to try to slow you down. They're going to say, yeah. you don't have to be radical for Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now that this is the hour for the church of Jesus Christ to get loud. Yeah. They're trying to cover your voice. You yeah. see, COVID, it was birthed in hell. And I believe it was a weapon formed against you. Yeah. against the church of Jesus Christ. Now is not the time to sit back and wait for the, the rapture to happen. No, no, no. We need to stand up and boldly say Jesus Christ is Lord and that he is coming back. We need to get ready. We need to turn our eyes upon yeah. him. Praise God. Jesus was drawn to this man. He liked this man's desperation, that he was shouting for Jesus because Bartimaeus, it says he got even louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus came to him and restored his sight. And it says that Bartimaeus followed him down the road. We kind of see this as a it happens over and over in Scripture that God pulls people out of pits and he sets them on a rock yeah. and he gives them a song to sing. Praise God. So I, 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 was, I was delivered from drugs and, and alcohol and addiction. And uh, yeah, I, was, I wish I could tell you that I was a perfect little Christian the next day. <laughs> but he can attest to you that I was far from it. I was set free, but I had to renew my mind. I had to yeah. begin to think a totally uh, different way. So this is not just for drug addiction, but when we're set free from sin, now we become disciples of Jesus. Right. Jesus said, if you remain in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So we're, we're, we've been saved, we're being saved, and we will ultimately be saved. Yeah. So this is a process that we're walking through. But I thank God that I had men and women of God in my life that spoke the truth. They didn't tell me what I always wanted to hear. They spoke the truth. Actually, one time I was, had to 
I got mixed up in some things that were going on there in the program, and, and Brother Ken brought me into the office, and all the staff were in there, and they let me know exactly what they thought about me. It was probably the most powerful day of my life outside of when Jesus set me free. Um, they began to tell me that, that you know, if, if you keep being deceitful, if you keep, you know, trying to manipulate things and tr- keep trying to make things go the way you want them to go, you're going to keep living that same lifestyle. If you keep thinking the same way, you're going to keep getting the same results. Yeah. Um, you know, I got some punishment, but more than anything, um, the Lord touched my heart and broke me that day, and I chose to truly humble myself. And I went to one of the counselors the next morning, and I said, I don't want to be deceitful anymore. It was like breathing to me. I didn't know how to not be deceitful. So I told him, I'll do anything you tell me to do to get this deceit off of me. I would have gone out in the middle of the road and done the splits if he told me to. It probably would have hurt, but uh, <laughs> I would have done anything. I was willing to pay any price. And I believe that's the place we have to come when we get put on this rock and we begin to walk out our salvation. Yeah. Uh, that We have to do whatever I got to do to be like Jesus. I love what the evangelist Steve Hill used to say uh, from the Brownsville Revival. He'd say, sin is anything that Jesus wouldn't do. So I want to be like Jesus. I I want to walk like Jesus. I want to be conformed into his image. Because this world that we're living in right now, they don't just need another good service. They don't need you to be able to quote the, the King James Bible, although that's wonderful if you can. They need somebody that looks like Jesus to come in the power of the Holy Spirit and to step into their life. So Jesus, he he pulls us out of this pit. He pulls us out of this hellhole that we found ourselves in. And then he sets us upon a rock and he begins to to speak life over us, begins to conform us into the image of Christ. And, And he begins to bless our life as well. Um, so I, I went through the, the program there at Outreach Ministries. Um, I went through um, an internship program. And one of the things that I found that God places authority in your life. Um, he, he's placed pastors in your life. He's placed others that, that have come into your life to speak, to speak into your life, to advise you, to give you wisdom, to, to impart knowledge to you. And so I, I decided that I've, I've made enough decisions on my home so I came to Brother Ken. I still do this today when I feel like God might be doing, telling me something. I'll run it by him. If he tells me no, then it's, it's not of God. I just stop it right there. Um, but he, he uh, encouraged me about Fire School of Ministry. Um, I went to Fire School of Ministry. It's a long story how, how me and my wife met and then separate. I mean, we were, we were dating and then... She found out I was a drug addict, didn't want anything to do with me. She moved all the way to Texas. I wanted to go and try to win her back, but I followed the call of God, and God brought her to the school I was going to. We ended up graduating together. Um, We got married in June of 2019. Um, We've traveled to Africa. We've traveled to uh, Mexico together. We travel all over the United States in a different church almost every Sunday. She's a powerful worship leader. Um, I mean, God could not have put it together better than before. So if you're out there and you're wanting a spouse and you're waiting for a spouse, go after Jesus with all of your heart. And, and the wife or the husband that God has for you, if they're running after Jesus as well, eventually you're going to collide yeah. together. And this is the way you want to do it. You don't want to go outside of God's ways of doing things. So he brought me out of a pit. He set me upon a rock. And he put a new song in my mouth. Amen. Praise God. You see, this morning, in the United States of America, um, we've been having a pandemic in Alabama. I'm sure you've been having one up here as well. Um, There's deep darkness that's coming across our land. Um, I'm not saying that to discourage you because I think we need to elevate our perspective like Jesus did when he saw that man running at him that was full of darkness. So I see the deep darkness. I'm not denying the deep darkness. There is an antichrist agenda at hand in our nation. I mean, you don't have to watch the news more than 30 seconds. And if you've you know, studied the Bible very much at all, you can see something is taking place. Something evil is taking place when they call good evil and evil good. Um, 
when there's promoting, promoting homosexuality, promoting abortion, saying that it's a gift from God. That's something I heard a couple of weeks ago out of a lady's mouth. Um, all of these things are happening. They're, they're pushing, pushing socialism, which leads to communism. I heard it put that socialism is communism with diapers on. This is where we're going. <laughs> Let's not forget about Nazi Germany. This is what's coming. And the thing is, they're coming after you. They're coming after the church. They're coming after Christians. They're trying to take your voice. But, but the Bible says that he put a song in your mouth. Yeah. Amen. Somebody needs to hear the song that God has put in your mouth. I love it. Uh, just before Jesus ascended into heaven, you can read this in Acts chapter 1. Yeah. He, he, the disciples are coming to him, and they're asking him questions. They still don't really fully understand what's taking place. I mean, they know Jesus rose from the dead. He's been walking with them for 40 days. They think that he's about to restore the kingdom to Israel. He's going to set up, set up his political kingdom. He's going to get a military force and just overtake everybody. And so they ask him, is now the time you're going to restore the kingdom? Is now the time that you're going to make Israel great again? Right. Is now the time? And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time or the season but what you do need to know is this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, yeah, even to the ends of the earth. You see, there again, he saves us from something for something. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, not just so you can shake and fall and speak in tongues, which I, I love all of those things. But he wants us to receive power to be a bold witness. Right. A witness, they tell what they've seen and what they've heard. Right. So we receive power to be a witness. And Jesus is like, no, no, this is my only plan. This is my only plan. Our hope for the future, our hope to see the kingdom of heaven established here on the earth is not through politics it's not in the White House. It's in this house this morning. Right. You are God's yeah. only plan to redeem the world back to himself, to receive yes. power yes. and to be a yes. witness of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you might be thinking, but, you know, I, I've never done drugs. I've never been bound to alcohol. You know, I was, I was saved when I was four years old. The Bible says that all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. Of God. Your sin might have looked different than our sin, but it was still vile and wicked in the eyes of Almighty God. And we had to be delivered out of a pit. We had to be set upon a rock. Yeah. And I thank God that He has given us a song yeah, to sing God. this morning. Yeah. I mean, just look through all of the accounts of the Great uh, Commission where, where Jesus is, is saying, look at this one in Matthew 28. Jesus comes to him and says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. What he's saying is, I have defeated sin, I've defeated hell, I've defeated the, uh, the grave. I, I have the keys back. I have all authority given to me. I am victorious today. And now I'm giving you this victory. I'm giving you this authority in your life so that now you can go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing yeah, yeah. them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God wants to use you. You yeah. are called by God to make disciples, to, to begin to speak into other people's life, to begin to say what God has done in your life. All, all discipleship really is is taking somebody taking them under your arm and teaching them what, what everything that God's taught you, yeah. you begin to teach with them. You begin to walk with them. You begin to talk with them. It, it's, it's an amazing process. And the thing about discipleship is, like I said, when I got set free, I was not the perfect little Christian. And it can be very hard in the ministry we work at. We're trying to figure out, are these guys real? Are they, are they you know, trying to just get out of going to jail? I mean, what's going on with these guys? But at the end of the day, they can't fool God. If they fool us, they can't fool God. So all we do 
is we pour into them, we love them, we put our arms around them, we begin to teach them the word of God, we begin to live out an example before them. And this is what discipleship looks like. The rest is up to God. God's yeah. the only one that can change anybody's heart. Right. And I've noticed this, most of the times, the ones that I think are really getting it are, are just the most amazing guys that are going to go out and change the world. Those are the guys that stab us in the back. We find out they've been, they've been manipulating us the whole time. They've been lying. And the ones that were like, man, this guy's a mess, those are the ones that are actually getting real with us. We're seeing the real them. And, yeah. and you know, God's not afraid of your mess. He's not afraid of any dark place. He can restore all things, and I've just yeah. seen over and over and over just God restoring lives and, and God putting new purpose. It's amazing what God does. Yeah. Um, I have story after story after story, but I know this morning that God is, is calling us to lift up our voices in this hour, to lift up our songs mm. that he's put within our mouths. Praise and uh, actually, I had COVID last August, um, and the Lord really spoke to me because the, the main symptom that I had was I was having trouble breathing, which is not a very fun thing at all. But I felt like the devil was, it was like an attack against my voice, that, that God has given each and every single one of us a voice in this COVID thing is to come and to cover us I'm not, I'm not against anybody wearing a mask, so don't, don't take that. I'm just saying, it, it's, he's covering our mouths. He's, he's trying to steal our voice. So I got on Facebook Live, and I just felt like I'm going to kick the devil where it hurts. Whenever I feel the devil attacking me, I'm not going to just sit back and let him attack me. Remember what I said? Jesus has given you authority. I'm going to take it, the, 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 the attack to him. Yeah. Jesus said that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Do we believe that this morning? The, the, the gates is the last defense into hell. It's not keeping hell out of the kingdom of heaven. We are supposed to be invading the darkness. We're yeah. supposed to be bringing hope to the hopeless. Yeah. So I got on there and I really felt Romans 1.16 and I just feel led to declare that over you this morning where the apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Why was he saying that? Probably because he was being shamed for preaching the gospel. Yeah. If you read through the life of the Apostle Paul, everywhere he went, he was beaten. He was, he was just stripped. He was humiliated. Um, he was dragged through a city. He was stoned. I mean, over and over and over. And every time he just gets right back up and he just keeps preaching the gospel anyways. I believe there might be a time coming in this nation where they're going to say, you can't preach this, you can't preach that, you can't cast out devils. Well, we have to make a decision in our hearts that I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because this is why. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. The hope for this nation is the gospel of Jesus Christ being proclaimed out of your mouth. We can't wait for somebody else to do it. We can't wait for the pastor to do it or the evangelist to do it or the missionary to do it. God is calling you yeah. to not Amen. be ashamed of the gospel, to declare the gospel it's amazing how powerful the gospel is. When I was in Africa, uh, the, the evangelists would get up and we, we would hold these big crusades in these little villages, but we'd have 10 to 15,000 people at these events. And then he would preach the simple gospel to Muslims, people that had never heard the gospel before. Very, very basic. I mean, John three sixteen basic. But then the altars would be completely flooded. And then right when he'd give the altar call, it's like a, a switch was flipped. Because there's power in the gospel. When you proclaim the gospel, power is being released. The gospel in your mouth is just as powerful as the gospel in God's mouth. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. So he, he declares the gospel and like on, on cue, there's like hundreds of people just fall into the power of God and begin to manifest demons. So there in Africa, they do much, things much differently. And I, I, I really like it, but I think if you did it here, you'd probably get arrested. So they start dragging these people behind, behind the stage and start casting these devils out of them. I look back at one point, and there's a pastor in a three-piece suit. I mean, it's like 100 degrees outside, too. This woman gets away from him. He takes off running. He tackles her to the ground. He begins to cast this devil out of her. Five minutes later, she didn't care that he tackled him. She got up. 
And she declared that Jesus Christ has set me free today. I was threatened before I came to this meeting. She was a Muslim. She said, if you go to this meeting, there will be consequences. The, the, the witch doctors had tormented her. She was full of demons. She said, but after today, I will never stop telling people what Jesus Christ has done in my life. This is the power of the gospel. Yeah. You don't have to be the most eloquent speaker. You don't have to be the best guitar player or musician. He's just looking for somebody that's available. Yeah, praise God. You have anything else you want to share? You go, bro. Let's, let's, just, let's just stand for, for just a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just focus on Jesus for just yes, a moment. Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, we love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I, I pray that you would just fill this place, Lord. Lord, that you would begin to even stir hearts this morning. Yes, God. If you're in a pit this morning, you're bound to sin. You're just like that, you're in that mud and that mire, you keep trying to get out. You know, you've been looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. I mean, you're bound and you just can't get out. If that's you this morning, I want you to just lift up your hand right where you are and say, I need Jesus to intervene in my life. If that's you this morning and you want Jesus to intervene in your life. I've been to church, I've, I've said prayers before, but you know what? I, I'm bound to sin this morning. I'm not ready to face Jesus this morning. If that's you, I just want you to lift your hand right where you are. I don't see any hands, so I'm assuming everybody right now is right with God and, and ready to face him. I'll give one more opportunity before, before we switch to something else. Thank you, Lord. Right. I'm going to give another call. I, I just really feel I know that this has been a, a very challenging time. But you're out there this morning and you love Jesus with all of your heart. But you're... you're You've, discouragement has come upon you. You just need a fresh touch from God uh, this morning. Even if you're not discouraged this morning, you said, you know what? I need the power of God upon my life. I, I, need, I need a fresh touch from heaven this morning yes, to God. go out in power, to be a witness in my, in my workforce, in my jobs, in my home, in my, my community. If that's you this morning, I just want to invite you to come to the front and brother ken and i would be happy to pray with you pray over you yes. just for a fresh touch from heaven this morning yes god thank you lord yes lord thank you lord yes lord. thank you lord thank you lord yes god you Holy Spirit. If you're coming, I just want to invite you to go ahead and just begin to talk to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Just Lord. begin to invite him to, to touch your life. Brother Ken and I can't do anything but, but the Lord. You know, I feel like there's, uh, there's some of you that are still in your seats um, and it's not so much that you're discouraged yourself, but you know somebody right now that's really going through it, really struggling. And uh, if you'd like to come and, and stand in their place, I want to encourage you to come and uh, find you a spot in this altar. We're just going to simply lay hands on you and ask God to intervene in your situation. And uh, anybody else that should be down here before we... Okay, would you do this, the rest of you, if you would um, maybe just extend your hands this way as we pray for these. And, uh, yeah, 
just let's don't this not a spectator thing just extend your hands and you begin to pray as well Any, anything else Come, sweet Jesus. Come and wrap my brother up in your presence, God. Let your power, let your glory be upon him, Father. God, I pray boldness. God, I pray courage. God, I pray wisdom. I pray more and more of you, Jesus. More of your presence, Lord God. Let it come. More of your presence, Jesus. Come, sweet Jesus. Come, come, let your power, your glory. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Just drink deep. Drink deep. Come. Mm. Lord, you said you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses. God, I pray, Lord, use these two for your glory. Come, sweet Jesus. Come, sweet Jesus. Come with your power. Come with your presence. Come. God, come and wrap us up. Wrap us up. Soak us with your presence, Lord. Wrap us up in your love, God. Let your power and your glory be on us, Jesus. Come. Yes, Lord. More of you, God. More of your glory. More of your power. speak to the rest of you while he finishes up praying for these that are in the altar. Um, you know, we, our message this morning is one of hope for anybody, anybody that needs to come to Jesus, but I'm sure you picked up that both Skylar and I are evangelists, and as evangelists to the body of Christ, it's in our heart to stir you up stir you up because here's the thing I may be an evangelist but if you know Jesus you're a witness you're a witness that if the world's going to hear the gospel they may or may not hear from me but they will hear from you because you're out there with them all the time and so some of you I believe this morning your heart was stirred and I just feel like right where you're at we need to make an altar and it, so if you would say right now, you know, God was speaking to me and stirring me this morning, and I want more boldness. I want, to be, I want to be a better witness for Jesus. If that's you, I want you to lift both hands. Lift both hands. It's like surrender or like a funnel. So get them both up there. And I feel like I ought to pray for you before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see these that are lifting their hands to say, God, I want you to use my life. I want to move in boldness. I want to move in your power. I want divine opportunities to minister Christ to my family, my friends, my co-workers, my neighbors, my community, and my world. I want you to flow through me, God. And so now, God, you see every hand that's lifted. And God, I'm calling on you that these are funnels, funnels lifted to heaven. And I say right now, God, pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us, Jesus. Yes, God, more. More of your presence. More of your glory, God. More opportunities. More boldness. More joy. More life in the name of Jesus, God. Pour it out on us. Precious Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. We love you, Jesus. 
we love you, Jesus. God, we're thankful for your mercy, for your grace on our lives. God, we're thankful, Lord, even that you brought us through this last year and a half. Thank you for that, God. God, I thank you that, Lord, you're not through yet, God. You're doing something bigger and better than we ever imagined. Lord, I just pray your grace and power on every family. God, I pray for those that are still sick in this community. God, I pray that you would raise them up, that you would minister life to them. And God, that you would eradicate this virus from hell from our lives, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and for your grace. Well, I want to say I want to say one more thing, and then I'm going to turn it to your pastor. You know, in, at the beginning of this whole COVID thing, I really, uh, I would, you know, when we were all kind of really locked down there for however long it was, um, I, I really asked the Lord to give me a daily download from Him. But I, I actually didn't get a daily download, but He did speak several words very clearly to me over the course of the next several months after that. In fact, the very first thing he said to me was that the devil is trying something, but he said, I'm up to something. The devil is trying something, but I'm up to something. And friend, I'm going to tell you something. There's definitely a move in all of this to change our world. But I'm going to tell you who's ultimately going to change the world. It's not going to be Democrats or Republicans. It's not going to be socialists or communists. I'm going to tell you that ultimately, the one that's going to change the world is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to get our eyes on him. And that's, he actually said several things, but I'm only going to give you one more. One day, I was listening to this, this doctor that talks about COVID a lot. I won't say his name. But um, I, I was in my office and on my computer screen, he was saying whatever he was saying that day and that changes a lot but anyway that's another story but he was saying whatever he was saying that day and I got really frustrated just to be honest with you and I said oh my goodness how long are they going to do this to us and the Lord spoke to me as clearly as he's ever spoken to me and he said you need to stop focusing on what they're doing and focus on what I'm doing And brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, I believe that's a word from heaven, that we're going to get distracted by the news media. They're lying to you, incidentally. Both, and I don't care whether you listen to liberal or conservative media, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. And so we need to get our eyes fixed on Jesus and be about his business because I don't know about you, but I think the hour's late. And besides that, we don't have much time left on this earth anyway. Even if we live out our life, we're going to be done here soon. And I want to know that I fully invested my life to the glory of God. Amen. It's been a joy to be with you guys this morning. Thank you, Pastor, for having us here. Praise. Give him a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for words of life this morning. Amen. I receive that today. Blessed be his name. Well. A few weeks ago, we talked to you about there's there's power in your seed. Do you remember that? There's power in your seed, and you got to plant that seed. And we want to plant into this ministry this morning. This is good ground. I mean, <laughs> this is good ground. You don't have to sit under that and hear very much. This is good ground. So I believe as we plant this morning, as we come, as we plant into this ministry, we're causing this not us cause but we're helping this we're going with them so that this ministry can go forth amen so I, I father i thank you this morning for brother ken thank you for brother skylar lord what a skylar what a gift you are man to the kingdom thank you so much and lord i i thank you so much for or what they're doing what you're doing through their lives and lord i bless them for it to continue Father, I bless you, Lord, that the fruitfulness, God, that, Lord, you've even began to do, God, when sometimes the enemy says, I've got you in a corner, Lord, you just expand our territory. So, Lord, I thank you that you're expanding their territory. And, God, even what you've expanded thus far, Lord, God, it is going to expand exponentially, Lord, that much more. Lord, so I thank you that we can be a part of that through prayer. We're going to be a part of that by, Lord, just planting seeds 
seed into that. So, Lord, I thank you that, God, as there's power in the seed this morning, and, God, there's harvest in the seed today. Lord, harvest not only for ministry to continue, but harvest for needs to be met. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, right now. Lord, as people come forward, plan into this ministry, we receive your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen? Would you take a moment, come, and uh, you guys play us something. Amen.